I like that. That blah, 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 blah. So I don't like the ones where it'd be like, <laughs> like, this just sounds weird to me. And that's what my car sounds like right now. So I thought I'd make a video on how to uh, appropriately get your car to idle after installing the cam. Now I've done uh, multiple videos on how to um, tune your car after cam, blah blah blah, whatever. We'll make an exact video on just uh, how to get your car to idle properly. So one of the initial things that you want to do is you want to set an idle. Um, all kinds of people go out and they put their idle 900 to 1000. A uh, little excessive. So, um, you know, your idle should be as low as possible without it dying, uh, but not so low that the car bogs and try to take off. So, for me, uh, one of the best starting points for most vehicles with a cam is 800 RPMs. Um, and you can work up or down from there, whichever, I guess, floats your boat and sound wise. Um, some people they want their chop to be a little faster, some people want it to be slower and they mess their idle from there. So we go through and we make all of our changes to our idle first. Next, depending on the size of the cam, is airflow final minimum. So you're going to be idling 1000 down, a good place to start is 20% for almost any cam and then select about from here to 3000 um, and even it out a little bit so that way the numbers aren't jumping all over the place and that should be a good start for your minimal airflow after you start your car so after you start your car um, if it wants to idle down and die you want to increase these numbers if it wants to idle way too high, you want to decrease these numbers. All right, so startup airflow. Uh, most cars are going with a cam need more airflow when they start up. Good place to start here, 10%. If you have to press your gas pedal to start the car, you need to keep adding to this table in increments, probably a 5% after this. Spark. So cranking spark. See all this negative down here and these low numbers? When your car is hot, this is why it doesn't want to start when it's hot. So we just make all these five degrees, fixes that issue. One other thing, and this is very rare, but if your car needs more fuel or less fuel, this is the table you go to. You can add percentage, take percentage away, and it'll change the, the fuel that it uses while cranking, whether you need it to add more or less. But normally, for just cam only, uh, you're only going to mess with the airflow tables. When you start messing with this table is when you start having a lot of other things, bigger injectors, boost, things like that. So then from there, you have your initial idle sound, which is controlled here by the overspeed and underspeed tables. These are limiters that limit the amount of up and down that your idle can do. So if you want less of a cam sound, make a negative five. If you want more of a cam sound, make a negative 35. And then I always change zero back to zero. Um, you can do that on park neutral and gear. Uh, I usually don't change coast myself. Same thing here. Bump this up. This will allow your idle to swing more and allow your car to have more of a chop to it. Now, obviously if you want it to be more of a sleeper sound, which is hard if you get a really big cam, you want to limit the amount of spark that it adds or takes away. So that way it uh, basically essentially chops faster and smooths out.